All right, shrink wrap example. So here we have this odd shape, and it's just two shapes actually combined together. So this is nothing really new. Um, so all I did was take the sculpt tool, I sculpted two odd shapes, and an object joined them. Okay, And then I went transform uh, geometry to origin. And then I'm going to add a box. Okay, I'm going to go three on the keyboard, uh, hit W, and move the box into position up here. I'm going to shrink the box up. I'm going to make sure the box is kind of a little bit over and above what I need it to be. And then I'm going to destroy the ends. Okay, I do that by going to face, X, face, X, face. There we go. I got this. All right, a little bit of uh, paperwork is involved. First off, we're going to go to multi-res and hit subdivide. Now, if I hit tab, I can go between the two. Also, I want to turn on wireframe. And also, I want to add another modifier called shrink wrap. Now, this thing is called Jill or Goal. Doesn't matter what you call it. Goal needs to be put into wireframe. Well, not wireframe, wireframe. There we go. So now I have the ability to translate between the two resolutions, just like that. Get used to doing that. And I also have the ability to kind of adjust it. Let's say I take this piece, hit A, three on the keyboard, and I rotate it just a little bit. What happens? Okay, there we go. If I hit tab, you can see how it translates over to the new mesh. All right, what if I take and hold shift and alt? Let's extrude this, and you can see it's jumping onto the mesh, and I can now rotate it too. If I hit tab, you can see how it's transferring onto the new mesh. Now this is where it gets tricky because you know you could keep trying to get it so it's perfect. What you want is a low res representation onto a high mesh with good topology. So this is a way of retopologizing items. Just like that. Now, if you remember that weird mutant B thing that we made, we had to join the objects together. This is just an alternative to that. It's a little bit harder to set up sometimes. I would constantly switch over to three on the keyboard though, a side view. There we go, there's our new shape. Now if we want to apply that shape, we can. We can just go to the modifier and hit apply, hit apply, and now it's now applied to that. can slide it off and it doesn't affect anything. And if I wanted to fill these, I could. OK. 
Okay, FF face. Nothing new there. And then I could join these if I wanted to. So I'll just end cap one of these just to give you an example. Here's point to point, and then I can merge those at center. There we go. That's how you develop an end cap for it. All right. So that's how you produce weird shapes using uh, the shrink wrap tool. Enjoy. Again, practice that before you go creating an entire character. Let's say you had arms, feet, legs, and everything else. I would piece out things. I would do maybe an arm. Get the muscle tone the way you like it using sculpties. Sculpt them all together, join them, and then start developing that arm as a separate piece, then the leg as a separate piece, and the body as a separate piece. Because if you try to do the body attached to the arm, attached to the fingers, everything else, it fails because then you're going to have to start using the project feature in multi-res, uh, which in shrink wrap, the project feature has a little bit of quirkiness. But if you piecemeal things, you'll get a better result. And that's in my humble opinion, just in case there's those diehard Blender artists out there that says, no, but just in case. All right, enjoy, and let's move on to the next video.